Good morning, praise the Lord. Today, 25th September, we'll talk about James the Apostle. James was the brother of John and one of the sons of Zebedee and Salome. He was a fisherman by trade and while mending nets by the seashore was found by the Lord Jesus. As Jesus passed by, he called, follow me, and James immediately left everything and followed. He exhibited faith and commitment in leaving a lucrative business to venture into discipleship. He became one of the twelve whom Lord called to be with him. And he was one of the three in the inner circle. The other two were Peter and John. They were present with the Lord at times of critical importance. Like his brother John uh, in temperament, the Lord called them both boner guests, meaning sons of thunder. They used to get angry very easily. James was content to play second fiddle to his younger brother John. We do not read of him preaching or teaching, nor of any great exploits he did. He was, however, associated with John in questioning uh, and uh, when they addressed some questions to the Lord. One such was a request supported by their mother Salome that in his glory James and John should sit on his right and left. This we see in Mark 10, 35 to 45. Mark records that John and James went to Jesus with their request. In Matthew, their mother also made the request. They, she also accompanied them. The disciples, like most of the Jews of that day, had the impression, uh, this was the wrong idea, of Messiah's kingdom as predicted by the Old Testament prophets. They thought that Jesus would establish an earthly kingdom that would free Israel from Rome's oppression. James and John wanted honored places in it. But Jesus' kingdom is not of this world. It is not centered in palaces and thrones, but in the hearts and lives of his followers. The disciples did not understand this until after Jesus' resurrection. This thought of sitting on either side arose out of their enthusiasm for the future, but served to anger the other disciples. They seemed to be seeking places of honor for themselves at the expense of others. The Lord gently rebuked them and asked whether they felt able, uh, able to suffer with him and to die for him, sharing his cup and his baptism. They said, we can. They solemnly affirmed. The Lord said, you will. And they did also. James was the first of the apostles to die as a martyr for his testimony and leadership when beheaded by Herod Agrippa. The Lord was teaching them that places in glory are not awarded on a basis of favoritism, but are prepared for those in whose lives service and suffering are paramount. James was intensely loyal to the Lord, and when a Samaritan village rejected him, he was all for calling down fire from heaven to consume them. The Lord rebuked this vindictive, vindictiveness. James characterizes the quiet believer who goes through life in happy, consistent service for the Lord. Neither a preacher nor a teacher, but enjoying close fellowship with the Lord, he will be fiercely def defensive if the Lord is attacked by others. James was faithful even unto death. We need more James like, like this today. Let's pray. Lord, thank you, Lord, for teaching us about James. Please help us to be loyal and so enthusiastic like James. In Jesus' precious name I ask. Amen. God bless you.